If you've ever worked in the public accounting sector, and for that matter, if you've ever been involved with an audit, then you'll understand what I mean when I start talking about a company's system of internal controls. This is designed to enforce the proper separation of duties to minimize, if not completely eliminate, the chances that someone has of stealing money from the company. Bill.com and the workflows that it enables us to set up actually allows us to do this without having to hire additional employees, which is what we would otherwise have to do in order to properly separate duties such as who enters a bill, who pays the bill, and who signs the check. So we're going to take a look at how to set up workflows in Bill.com and why that actually helps increase the level of security that we have over our assets. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. In the previous lesson, we entered a bill. And the way things were set up up to that point, it would be easy for anyone pretty much, well, anyone who has a login, to enter and pay a bill. But many times we don't want it to be that simple. One of the benefits of using a product like Bill.com is that it provides you with infrastructure that allows for much, much better security than you could ever have just uh, printing checks out of your own office or even going and using your bank's online banking. Because in order to have people pay bills using your bank's online banking, you have to give them access to your bank account. And you have to give them more than read-only access, right? So the way we set it up when we're working with clients in Bill.com, for the reasons I mentioned previously in the course, we don't give ourselves permission to actually pay any bills. What we'll do is we'll be the ones who can enter the bills, and we'll be the ones who can approve them. But ultimately, we leave it for the client to pay them. So that's one example. The other thing is even internally within a single organization where let's say they're entering and paying all their own bills, then you still may want to have this workflow. It has to do with what we call a, a system of internal controls. And there are certain guidelines for how to make sure that the right internal controls are in place which are designed to minimize the chances that somebody can steal from the company. And what I mean by that is the same person who enters the bills probably should not be the same person who pays them. Now granted, smaller organizations, there's no getting around that. You would have to hire extra people just to separate those duties, and obviously that doesn't make sense. So we're talking about organizations here that are large enough to uh, be able to have that kind of thing in place. And usually when they get to that size, that's when it becomes necessary to, right? In a smaller business, the owner is the internal control system because the owner tends to have their hands on everything at that stage and at that level. So all of this is to say that Bill.com gives us the ability to put, in, put settings in place that will restrict the ability to get a bill paid without it being approved by the right person. And you can even set thresholds where you can have multiple approvers and you can say that if a bill is, for example, more than $5,000, it requires two approvals, right? When we set up our workflows, as I've mentioned before, we're talking about really a, a, a sort of digital version of separating the duties. And what it really comes down to is that I'm able to uh, establish who can do what. In other words, I don't have to go hire more people. I don't have to hire separate people so that I can separate those duties physically. In the smaller business, oftentimes the owner of the business is the internal control because that's the one person who, in many cases, is the only person who can actually sign a check. But as the business grows and you're starting to hire more people, then you have to be concerned. Classic example is that what I mentioned before. I'm going on vacation. I need to make sure somebody can pay my bills while I'm gone. So I leave a stack of signed checks with somebody. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen where that trusted bookkeeper who's been with the company for years, the temptation, I guess, is too great, whatever the case might be. We're always shocked when it happens, but it does happen that they'll decide to give themselves a little bonus based on the fact that they now have access to that stack of signed checks. Well, as soon as we start using a product like Bill.com, we never have to leave anybody with signed checks. You can set up the workflow. The bookkeeper is going to be able to enter the bills. That's it. It might even be that the business owner can be the one who approves the bills. Or maybe the bookkeeper actually can enter and approve, but still the business owner can pay them. Which means that even while you're on vacation, relaxing on the beach in Maui, you can whip out your smartphone because you got the notification that the bills have been approved, and all you have to do then is sit and tap off the bills that you want to pay on your mobile device. It's that easy. And Bill.com, with the workflows that it enables us to set up, makes it really easy for us to establish who can do what, and at what point it has to be the final approval of the owner to establish or initiate a bill payment. 
And that, my friends, is I think what makes Bill.com so much more powerful than it already is just based on being able to manage accounts receivable and payable. So let's get into this and see how this works and what this looks like. We're going to go into our settings over here, into the overview. And let's go over here to payables and we're going to go right to approvals. Okay, so right off the bat, this is the screen, the first screen I want you to get familiar with. First things first, are changes allowed to a bill or a vendor credit that's been approved? So in other words, once it's been approved, you might want to be able to say that changes are not allowed. Or in case there are multiple approvers, you might say they're allowed until everyone has approved it. In other words, once it has the final approval, no changes should be able to be made, right? In theory, that's what you'd want because that means that everybody who needs to have eyes on it has had eyes on it. And why would you ever want to change something after all eyes that are supposed to have been placed on it, so to speak? In other words, that would be sketchy, to say the least. So that would be my choice, right? Or you might, or if there's only, if you know there's only ever going to be one approver, you could just say changes are not allowed once it's been approved. But let's just leave it at this for now. Now the next thing is we have to decide whether or not approvals are necessary at all, right? So down here, that's where you choose. So we're going to say bills are routed for approval and are ready to be paid when approved, right? So then we have to say who's the default approver for all future bills. So we're going to say that my other persona, my school of bookkeeping, Seth David, is the default approver for all future bills. And do they approve all future bills or only the ones with no other approver assigned? So we're going to say all future bills. And then we'll say save. Now, in the last lesson, you saw me enter a bill for a million dollars. I actually went and deleted that bill because now, we, now I want to re-enter that bill so I can show you what this looks like. So let me bring that bill back up, and we'll go ahead and enter it again real quick, and you're going to see uh, some new areas in the uh, bill payment screen here. So let's go over into our inbox, and let's enter a bill. All right, we'll do it to Seth David again. It's invoice number 304-321. Do on receipt amount one million dollars okay we need an account we'll book it to consulting and accounting and notice how nice that is that the search actually in the drop down here works better than it does in QuickBooks right in QuickBooks I have to know how the account is titled from the beginning I have to type consulting for an account like this to come up here I typed accounting and it came up with this based on the fact that accounting was just one word in the account title. So that's yet another little reason why it's better to do this stuff in bill.com. And notice what I have here that wasn't here before. It says approver is one. A approver, an approver is required. Now the only reason it gives me the option to remove this is because I own the bill.com account. I'm like the super administrator. Any other user would not have this option here. And if I had multiple approvers, notice here I could click and drag to uh, reorder the approvers to decide who needs to approve first, second, and so on. And then I could set myself up as a final approver. So maybe I would have this person approving it, and you see how that works. So maybe I put myself in first, and I have to approve it. And then once I approve it, it'll go to my other, my alter ego here to, uh, to approve it afterwards. So now that we had established that there is an approval process in place, that changes the dialogue when we're entering bills because we have to factor that in. And right from here, as you can see, I can add a new approver. So we'll save that. And it says this invoice already exists because I had gone in and deleted it. So if I'd still like to save this bill, check this box, I'll say yes. And again, I say it's OK and save. And now, if I want to pay it, notice the approval status says approved, so I say any and go, and there it is. So now, in fact, both bills, even the one I had entered before changing the approval process, uh, requires approval. So I can say select. Now, again, because I'm the super admin, it lets me override that, and I can say to pay it. But over here is where we can go to approve it, right? So there's also a new menu under payables for approvals. And now I can just 
filter this and say not yet approved and there is my million dollar invoice and I can approve it. And it says am I sure I want to approve the selected bills without reviewing the bill details. Okay. Okay, now there's going to be an approval notification sent out to my alter ego so that he can come in and provide the second approval, which is now required before we can make the payment. So let's test this out. Let's see if it'll let me pay it. Oops, you got to be careful where you click because when you move your mouse over the top here, these drop downs come in, and oftentimes I find myself clicking things by accident that I don't mean to. So if I go over here to pay, and then I come in here and select the drop down, now if I choose approving, that bill shows up here because it's approving. It requires two approvals, remember? And if you click on the invoice number, it will take us back in. And notice it shows that I've approved, but now it's waiting for the second approval. And if I'm not a super admin, like I am, then any other user who's in here who has author authorization to pay but not approve, let's say, uh, will not be able to pay it until that second approval is given because that's the workflow we set up. So that's the approvals process, my friends. It's not that difficult to set up. You pretty much establish who the approvers are, the fact that approvals are needed, and one other thing. I mentioned that there are ways you can set up thresholds. So let's go in there, back to approvals. This is actually really cool. So let's go to policies here. So um, I went to approvals. Let's go back. I did that a little fast. We go into the overview. We go to approvals. And if we go here to approval details, that little arrow there lets us know that we have some choices here. And we go here to policies. This is really cool. So if I go to create a new policy, then this is for bills. Okay, that are greater than or equal to, let's just say $5,000, requires two approvers, right? And then I select approver one and I select approver two. So this way I can say if the bill is more than $5,000, it requires two approvals, but anything else may only require a single approval, right? So let's go back to the uh, details. And notice now, once we're in here, we've got an audit trail. Right, which shows us everything that kind of conforms to that policy. So let's go back to details. Back to the overview here. Back to approvals. And again, I'm just going in here and checking on our settings. So bills are routed for approval and are ready to be paid when approved. If I go to enter a new bill, and you can enter a bill without documents right here. See where it says enter bill without documents? It's cool how that works. And I'm just going to enter in another bill for myself. Notice it comes in automatically with uh, two approvers, but let's say I only need one. Invoice number 123356. And if the amount is 5500 it should warn me that I need two approvers. Let's see what happens when I hit save. There it is. Bills of $5,000 more require at least two approvals. Approvers, mandatory. And if the bill is 4500 then it'll let me save it. So the person doing the data entry has to establish, you know, uh, who the approvers are, but it won't, if, if it exceeds a threshold, such as the one I set of $5,000, it won't let them save the bill without establishing who the approvers need to be. So the approval process in Bill.com is very powerful. It's very much customizable so that you can set up your workflow, prop workflow properly. So that let's say you have the bookkeeper entering the bills, maybe a manager approving them, and then maybe a third person, actually maybe the controller, the CFO, who actually goes in and pays the bills. And the beauty of this also, by the way, is that the bills can be paid, the bills can be approved and paid very easily from your mobile app. Let's quickly see what that looks like. If you're using an Android device like I do, then you'll get what you see here, which is a mobile site. It's not an app per se. You actually open it up on your browser, 
log in and you get this mobile site. And notice it shows me here that there's a bill to be approved and that their receivable is outstanding. And there's nothing in paid bills because they haven't been approved yet. So if I go into approve bills, we've got that uh, we've got a bill for forty five hundred dollars here, right? That's the one I was playing around with earlier. So I can tap on this and I can approve it. And it's under five thousand, so now I should be able to pay it. So if I tap home here. And notice now it shows up in pay bills. I mean, this is how easy it is, and this is what I love, because at the end of the day, the data entry is the data entry, and that part's pretty easy. But what's really cool about this is now my clients, with this mobile app or mobile site, iOS has an actual app that they use, um, but you can, you, can do it, you can do it all right here from your phone. So I love showing this to my clients and saying, hey, look, you can be on vacation. You can be laying on the beach and you can pay your bills. So, you know, you don't have to worry about leaving your office. You can go enjoy. I'll be here at my office while you're away on vacation and I'll be entering and approving your bills for you. And all you need to do is go in and pay the bills that I've approved. Just go in once I've approved something and hit pay bills. And every day you'll get notified by email about any bills that have been approved that are waiting for you to pay. It's that simple. That's what I love about this. So um, as always, if you have any questions, please post them in the answers forum. The answers forum at schoolofbookkeeping.com is available only to students. So if you're not a student, become one. And then you'll be able to take advantage of our answers forum where I'll get back to you within 24 hours, usually a lot less, with answers to any questions that you may have. As always, I hope... I sincerely hope that you had some fun along the way, but most importantly, that you learned a ton as a result of taking this course. I look forward to getting your questions and feedback, and I look forward to seeing you in the next course. Bill.com offers us a variety of tools that help us better manage cash flow and better manage the security of our most important asset, our cash. Hopefully, you've been able to pick that up based on the lessons that I've laid out here for you in this course. If you haven't already, and I certainly hope you have by now, you've got to take a trial of the Bill.com software and go through what I've shown you at the very least, video by video. Set up your account integration, look at the process, and, and go through the process of entering an invoice, receiving the payment, and seeing how that drops into your bank account as well as into your accounting software automatically. Same with the accounts payable process. And then take a look at the flexibility that you have with respect to having the ability to set up workflows. If you're an accountant or bookkeeper, that workflow part is especially important. You never want to be a signer on your client's account that exposes you to way too much liability, but you can use those workflows to automate as much of the process as possible so that the only thing your client slash business owner needs to do is tap those buttons on their mobile device in order to actually finalize the payment of all the bills. That, my friends, is the power that Bill.com offers in a nutshell. And I hope you see what I see, because I know that if you start making use of this product the way that I have in my own practice, that you're going to feel the power of it, you're going to see the increased efficiency that results from it, and if you're employing value pricing, you're definitely going to be able to increase your firm's profitability based on the use of an application like Bill.com. I'll see you in the next course. Oh,